Hi everyone, so I hope we're all having a really good day. This is a different kind of video today because if some of you may or may not know, I'm currently on holiday right now when you're seeing this. I'm currently away in Turkey, so what I'm going to be doing is sort of a different thing. I've only really got the time to play White Bay today, so I thought what I'd do, because a lot of you guys asked me sort of how you start off in Rust and things like that, so I'm going to try and show you guys a little bit <laughs> more progression wise as to how you sort of I start off in Rust and how about we go about getting a base. So we're going to go sort of from the start, nice and easy, and get ourselves a base down. We're going to try not to die here. This guy's actually getting bowed out from somewhere else, I think. He is. Yeah, not so big now, are you, dickhead? Hey, you better run. Fuck. I did that so slow. I did that so slow. If I just got that, I'm fucking ruined. I, that was, I was shaky. Chucky, damn you. So yeah guys, I'm going to try and do a video just basically showing you how I start off in Rust, the sort of places I go to right to begin with, getting myself a bow and some arrows and some enough stuff to basically build our base, and we'll go from there. I haven't got much time, so we'll just see how it goes. First thing I like to do is just make sure that I've got enough cloth for a bow. Haven't been able to do it recently in the last couple of wipes because I've been sort of aimed straight for the desert. So we're going to try and get a little bit of wood for a map and sort of plot our spot. Okay, so because I'm struggling to find cloth right now, I've elected for a spear instead. What we're going to do is pick up some mushrooms, pick up some cloth and move on. Got a map as well. The first thing you got to do when you play solo is kind of pick your spot. Now with the new updates, you got to live near the road. you got to live near a rad town. That's just how Rust is these days. So if we have a quick cheeky look at the map, Probably the best place for us to build right now is going to be down here, near a mining outpost, near the harbour. That is actually a really good spot. That guy's got a bow. There we go, boys. Oh no, I need an arrow, I need a bandage, I need a bandage, I need a bandage. Oh. Joke's on you. So, we've got our bow, we've got a couple of arrows and we've got our spear, so what I'm going to do is attempt to make my way to the area where we're going to build. Right, so I just absolutely love finding myself a cave on white bay. It just means that you've got a little supply of low grade that you can hopefully find down there, plus the potential for some metal frags. Now, I've just been eating up a little bit and we'll move on. The beautiful thing these days is that from one stone node you can actually craft yourself both tools now, which is quite nice. I do need to get a little bit of wood just so I can craft a few more arrows. We should be good. Someone hitting barrels just here. Hit that geared guy. Right, so the big thing is you've got to pick your battles when playing solo. So that guy's got a uh, wood helmet, which is nothing I'm pretty sure I'd be confident I could take him, but at the same time... I've got my bow now, I've got a pretty nice start, I'd prefer to see if I can manage to get a base down before we do anything too risky. I'm getting these barrels though because I'm going to head over to that where that lighthouse and use the recycler. So like I said earlier, really nice to find a cave and we'll see if we can find some low grade down here. If not, then push comes to shove we might be able to get a stone node or something. There you go, beautiful pieces of low grade. And actually if I take that out of there, we're almost pretty much at the furnace. If I go and hit a cactus we can almost get one. Pig is actually our route to a furnace. Oh shit. Fuck that, quite badly actually. Fudge some of the shots upon that guy, we're a bit shaky. It's been a while since I've used a bow, so we shouldn't be too bad. Right, these arch rocks are my favourite place in the entirety of Rust to build. So I'm going to try and build my shitty little base inside of it. Can 
they get in through the top still? Yes, they can. Shit on a brick. Right. So there you go, guys. It is that simple. I'm unsure if I want to use that down there or whether I just seal it up. Um, I think I might just seal it up like that. Nice and easy, eh? So yeah, there you go. So I'm going to lay my furnace, keep it cooking, lay my sleeping bag, and we're good to go now for the white. Everyone's happy. That, guys, is literally how I start in Rust. You you just go to the caves, hit the caves up, get a little bit of resources. If you can manage to get yourself a kill, then that's grand. If you can't, then you just move on, pick your battles, and get yourself a base. And in case you guys didn't know, you can actually cook these tuna cans and the bean and the bean cans. A lot of you guys don't actually know, and you comment on my videos when I've done it in the past, and it's kind of weird. You get 10 per tuna can and uh, 15 per bean can. So I think what that means is this is going to add up to like 75 straight off the bat before you even need to get a furnace or recycle anything just run over to a harbour or something run over to a road and get up a couple of food boxes because that's all I've got three or four food boxes and it really really is a really nice way to start out in the beginning as a solo player as or as a group really right we have the code lock now which is nice I'm just gonna use the old campfire trick see where it goes bottom right it's on 50% which means there's nobody camping me which means there's only just me next to it so I'm gonna dead quickly unlock with key remove lock throw that on spam a code in nice that's nice, so there we go. Completely secure, gonna sack that off and that off. Gonna dump that and that back in there. And we're gonna head out. I'm gonna head to the where lighthouse. And I might take some of this, I'm gonna say some of this stuff to recycle. But I've only actually got this propane tank I threw out earlier to recycle. So we'll hit some barrels and go. And if you guys are interested in what server I'm on, because you guys always ask, I'm on Lone Survivor's solo only server. It's honestly, in my opinion, the best way to play Rust these days. It's a server that doesn't die out. Um, so you can stay, uh, so I thought that was a building but it's actually just the harbour, I thought it was a base. You can just stay on here pretty much the whole way but it doesn't die out, which I quite like, I, I really enjoy that. The problem with Rust right now, servers die way, 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 way too fast and it's just taking all the fun out of the game. This one keeps its pop. And it means as a solo player you get a really good fighting chance and you get to enjoy the wipe a lot more than you do on these high pot ones. I'm not saying the high pot ones aren't worth the challenge because I freaking love the challenge on the high pot ones playing solo but damn when you get a good one-on-one -on -one bow battle it's so rewarding and satisfying to win it. So yeah while it's night time I'm just going to do a little bit of a run and collect as many components as I can from barrels here and over there at the harbour because I don't think anyone seems to be coming here yet. I am reasonably far from the spawn points but no one seems to be coming here just yet so I'm just going to use this time grab as much food and as much water and stuff as I can as many components recycle them as we go and really we should have a really good start here. I've already got the base, which is the most important thing on white day. And I'm feeling I'm feeling chuffed about this. Ow. Why did that door open outwards? Look, oh, barrels galore in here. What can I recycle? I can recycle three propane tanks. Sick, okay. Unless you're gonna build yourself a flamethrower, propane tanks are pretty useless. Unless you're gonna build a flamethrower or a flame turret. And they give a nice little extra supply of frags look. God, look at that. Ain't that a sight? Look at the launch site all the way over there. That's lovely. I'm going to use this stuff to craft myself a large box for when I get home. So I've got somewhere to store it all. Nice. Alright then, now it's daytime. Best thing to do is head out and find enough wood so that we can make ourselves a tool cabinet because we still don't have one of them. But if everyone cottons on to that, we're going to get griefed. So we'll just get one of those in and then I'm going to go and hit the harbour for some components. Honestly, the most important thing about Wipe Day is making sure that you get a secure base as quickly as possible, and then, then you, from there you can move on, go out, PvP, and do whatever. A lot of the problems with Rust these days are the fact that people serve a hop, build up a shitty little base from the beginning, and then just go and PvP. What you want to do as a solo player, if you're planning on sticking to a Wipe, is you want to build a base that's got plenty of room for expansion, one that's got plenty of defensive capabilities, and one that you're going to be able to live in for the whole Wipe. So that's the plan with one of these bases, one of these arch bases. Not essential, you could build like a normal 2x2 two two or something, it's not 100% necessary, but it's always nice to have something that you know is going to be really secure for the way. Let's metal that one up. Try and squeeze this on as best as we can in there. Love it. Get the building plan wherever I put that bad boy. Let's see if we can seal this up so no one can steal it. Yeah, we can. Sick. I know you can put a lock on it and all that jazz, but to be honest, that isn't something that I'm that interested in doing right now. So when we come back, we'll metal that up and all as well. I really need to find some tarp. That's the big thing here. If we can find some tarp, we can start getting a little bit of surplus cloth going. 
And then if we die, it's not such a big deal, we can get a spare bow. And I know you guys say hit the cactuses for cloth, that's all well and good, you can hit the cactuses for cloth, that is 100% a viable option in the desert, but to me, it's time consuming and not as worth doing as it is just going and hitting a couple of barrels for some tarps. Okay, so just replenish some of the stocks of the old farming right now, just before we head out and try and kill, either kill some people or check out some of the bases in the local area. I want to try and get as many of the nodes as I can. This is I say this quite often, it's always good to try and get as many of the nodes as you can in your local area as quickly as possible because that just deters anyone from coming and building around you. Like I'd normally get these sulfur nodes. See in the old days I'd get all of the types of nodes but now it's like well you don't really need sulfur so why, why get it right at this early stage? I get it purely so that it looks like I've been here, you know? Like I'm gonna knock a couple, this node down halfway just so it's like damaged so people think ooh someone's been here. Now, it triggers my OCD and I hate it when people do it, but that is a really nice little tip to just turn people away from the area. We're honestly only on the lookout for stone nodes. Metal nodes are nice at the minute, but stone is the only thing anyone craves in Rust right now. Honestly, really happy with the way we built this base so far today. It's the, just the, like the speed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these ceiling pieces stone. They will become metal eventually, just so that it's a little bit added security. But right now, I just want this base to look and feel secure. When I've got enough metal, I'll make a metal, right? We'll do these ones for the fun of it. And now we've got an entirely stone base, guys. It's that really that easy. I've built in the perfect spot. We've got plenty of resources around us. And really, we're laughing. So right now, it would probably be worthwhile doing a little bit more farming, which is what I will do when I come back. However, I want to check out who else is in the area and who we've got to kill, basically. Now, I know there's some guys up here in this archway, um, that one over there, so I don't want to head that way. Oh, there's a mining outpost over there, which is nice to know. So, yeah, we've just got to sort of play this by ear and, and just sort of see who's about. If you guys are interested in... Oh, there's a base over there, straight away. If you guys are interested in this sort of episode st style, the guy in this arch base is building right now. There we go. If you guys are interested in this sort of tip video, because this is sort of, what have I called it, like naked to base or something like that, just how I start in Rust. If you're interested in seeing how I go about raiding, that was awful, in Rust, then please do let me know, because then I can, go, that gives me some, an idea of what you guys want to see. Because if you want to see like how I go about doing my raids, how I go about finding the bases, choosing the bases I want to raid, things like that, what goes through my head. That'd be fucking awesome if you guys let me know in the comments down below if that's something you want to see. Just like a, a tip video, but slightly further into the white. That'd be nice. Oh shit. This guy's actually got some stuff. So this guy's giving me 1800 stone and I am back. He's building in there, look. Rascal. So this guy's giving me 1800 stone, I'm taking this straight back. I don't want to risk a fight, I've got 56 health, it's not worth being stupid right now. Now there's the pitter patter of an airdrop, which is tempting at this stage because I've not got loads to lose, but at, this, at the beginning for a solo player, a bow, losing a bow is like literally losing a base, it's, the most, it's one of the most important things, so I don't really want to risk that, I want to try and take out a few more people around me first. Oh, he wanted cover. There we go. We're racking up a few kills now. Oh, ho, look who it is! Benny! You were my neighbour last wipe. Well, wipe. Well, wipe. Hey! Wipe before. <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck you! Mr. Revolver on wipe day. Oh shit! This guy has killed a bear and he is stacked. He was my neighbour last wipe. No, wipe before. Yeah, last wipe. Wipe before last. That is how you sort of get a nice little come up, guys. Get a nice kill like that on a nice farmer, and you've got a really nice setup, and everyone's really happy. I haven't found any gears, so I'm not able to build myself a ladder hatch or anything just yet. Not too big of an issue, really, because we've got the base and everyone's happy right now. I'm going to put them in there to save some storage space, and we're all good. Okay, so now we've killed some people, and we're feeling really good about ourselves. It's time to go back to a little bit of farming. It's got to be done. No one really likes doing it, and usually I would go out and PvP a bit more. The server wiped exactly an hour and a half ago, so this is honestly probably the smallest amount of time I've been able to garner an episode together for you guys. And I know today's episode is shorter than normal, and I get that, and I do apologise, but it's not an episode as a, as a wipe series, if you will. 
It's a tips guide video sort of hybrid survival video, if that is a thing. So I hope you guys have enjoyed a different sort of style. Like I said earlier, do let me know in the comments if this is something you'd want to see a little bit more of. Just one white day, seeing how we go, and then on top of that, if you want to see a little bit more further into the white ra raiding wise, early game or late game raiding. So I've still got the furnace cooking, they're still burning away frags, we've still got loads of those. I'm going to remove this wooden door for a metal one right now, just to make sure that the base is secure. So that means we've got three doors to our loot. Which is pretty good for White Day already, and we've been playing, as I said, an hour and a half. So I'm going to actually end today's video there. I, again, I apologise for it being shorter. Different type of video, and I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please leave a like on it. Um, as you know, I'm away from um, from my computer and away from Rust and everything right now. I will still be reading your comments. Um, I still will be answering you guys. I'm still active on my Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at TillsYT. You can join my Discord, which is linked in the description down below if you're not already in there for all my updates and shit. And probably the most important thing, guys, is I will be coming back to Rust, but please don't forget about me. Um, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a taster of some content while I'm away. So thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching this video. Thank you guys so much for supporting me as we've gone along. And I will be back in the next week or two with some fucking awesome content. I've got some cracking ideas lined up, so I'm going to be coming back with those. So thank you guys so bloody much. I'm just going to throw this code lock on here so we're safe. And have an awesome day, guys. I know I will. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. We stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona.